to the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the Morning with Laura Stiles and Rosenberg. Ladies and gentlemen, we are blessed to have time with the legend today. Give it up for cool DJ Red Alert. On oh, Ebro yeah. in the morning with Laura Stab and Rosenberg. Yeah. yeah. I respect y'all. Respect. Yo, Red, man. Uh, Laura put us on to what was going on with this whole... Um, it's a it's an art installation, Laura Styles, and, and a whole memorabilia of, of cool DJ Red Alert. Well, we're honoring. It's an honor um, with cool DJ Red Alert. But, uh, Red, I want you to tell us a little bit about it because I know it's, it's a multi... I, I believe there's a, a, a museum. I know you kicked off uh, with, with a DJ set. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? What it is, is this is a thing called the Red Alert Experience, right along my man Irv uh, Panton. What it is that I'm displaying all my archives, put it this way, a lot of people take time talking about their um, history. I rather show part of my history wow. by displaying some of the art archives that I have in my past time to help me become who I am. Now this is photography as well as video, as well as what else, what else are in these archives? Okay, we well, show within my turntable, show a collection of my records, um, it show my boombox, some of the tapes I have recorded, um, flyers, pictures, um, wow. beeper. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you know, if you remember like the old school radio where you had the carts. Yeah. I, yep. I show a, a, I show a cart of the remix of Eric B. and Rock Kim. I know you got sold. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Now, the exhibit is located in the main building, 8th Avenue, between 40th and 41st, on the yes. first floor by Starbucks. And, Red, we, yeah, have, a, um, Red, we have a BLS um, live show from Port Authority with you coming up soon, too, don't we? Yes. Uh, possibility you're going to be coming up right within this week, or if not, down the road, because we're going to be there all the way to the March 31st. But oh, it's wow. Gonna be, it's going to happen. It's gonna happen. And happen. this is open every day, seven days a week, or is there a specific... It's specific days. No, no, no. 24 hours. 24 wow. hours around the clock. And anybody who's going through there, even, you know, going through a bus or coming out from the train station, anybody that live in the tri-state area know what it is about the Port Authority in Midtown that That's you right, know you can walk on through. And you see all the archives across from it. They had a memorial for the 9-11. And um, all other different facilities is all provided right there. But um, now, it's a... It's a great thing because, you know, it's a blessing to say that you have showcased your stuff in the government grounds. Right, right. Well, and, and also, Red, you know, um, being able to, you know, see you in the hallways and, and, and just, you know, pass you and say hello and show you love throughout the years. First of all, thank you for always just being available to us, you know, who look up to you. Um, but second, also, you're not you're not the braggadocious type. And you're not the, like you said, you know, a lot of people like to talk about their accolades and their accomplishments, but you'd rather show folks. Is this also, was this, um, I guess, not difficult for you, but just new for you to show and show yourself and what you've done in this way? Well, I got to give a lot of respect to my team, Team Red Alert, and also uh, two guys who are curators for putting this together. My man, um, Cole Rodriguez and Sean Williams. And they always knew that I had a lot of stuff in, at home that I never just showed. They say, you might as well show this, but let them know what you have, put your hands on to make yourself who you are. So, you know, I say, let's go, make it happen. So, you know, it's team effort to make that uh, be appeared to the public and they see what is it I was doing behind the scenes as well as probably in front of them in the clubs or in the parks. Dope. Red, speaking of um, memorabilia, you must have some amazing stuff in your garage and at home. But can you tell us about some of your most prized possessions? Any hip hop oh, memorabilia man. that will blow people's minds? You know what? I have it located at my other home down in Atlanta. But I have my jacket, my Boogie Down production jacket from when mm. I was on tour back in wow. the, the Dope Jam tour. Um, of course, a lot of classic um, records that you can't find no more. Um, some some certain um, personal style shirts that was made for me. Um, a little bit of everything. I don't know if people remember this uh, video, uh, The Bridge is Over by Boogie Down Production. And you <laughs> yeah, saw what was spinning around the Godzilla. Yeah. I got that. Wow. <laughs> you know? I mean, I got a lot of stuff from the heydays. Now, now Red... Red 
Oh, go ahead, Rosenberg. I'm sorry. Sorry, I, I just wanted to jump to, on that. You mentioned the bridge is over. Yo, yes. Red, I was in the front row at that Kane KRS versus. Um, uh -huh. And, man, I was so thrilled to see you come out there for that part. What what did that uh, performance and moment mean for you? Uh, it's like Chris and I is regrouping because it's been a while since I've seen Chris. Well, I, I met there been a couple years before that when we did the 30-year anniversary at the Barclay for M Yo MTV. Um, it feel good, you know. It's like it's a natural when I get together with Chris, you know. We've been doing that from since day one when we got together. So that's what it is. Now, now, Red, when you um, talk to young DJs and, 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 you know, people in the culture that are coming up these days, and I, I, you always take time out, um, did, you, did you set this memorabilia aside uh, knowing just what it would mean later on? Were you always good at keeping, you know, photos and things that were, you know, important in your life? Or is this, were these just things that, you know, you had to go look for? Did you know what was there when you, before you were to put on this uh, exhibit? To tell you the God's truth, I had to scatter all throughout the house and pick up a little <laughs> bit here, a little bit there. Everything was spread out everywhere. So, you know, I had to spend a good week and a half to gather up. And this is only like a piece of what I'm showing. I um, have a whole lot more, whole lot now, more. But you know, besides that, I don't mean to cut you off. Uh, but uh, besides that, that gentleman that's right next to me, uh, Earl Panning, he have archives of photos that go as far back at the Roxy, mm, mm. as Union Square, at Latin Quarters. He got a lot of history, also. He does. Yo, shout to Irv, man. Um, did um now did you find anything that you have forgotten about Red when you were looking through stuff? Was there things in there you were like, yo, I still have this? Oh, yeah, yeah, certain pictures, um, some of my old needles when I'm on the turntable, um, certain headphones, uh, man, all kind of stuff, all kind of stuff. And now the location one more time, Laura Styles. Oh, hold on. I just, it's in Port Authority. It's, Port it's Authority. in Port Authority right there, uh, right in Manhattan. If you know, if you listen, if you're not from New York City, you may not know where Port Authority is, but it's right across from the uh, the New York Times building. The Times building's right there. It's, what is that? 42nd Street. 42nd and, and, yeah, mid, right there between, uh, was that 7th and 8th? 8th. Or yeah. 8th and 9th? No, no, 8th no, and 9th Avenue. 8th and 9th Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, Red, talk about as a DJ, I mean, you have kept yourself. Uh, active, doing parties, staying relevant uh, throughout many decades. Um, what what are, what are some of your your um, tricks of the trade that you could share with some of us young heads about staying in the game? Very simple. Learn how to master your craft and acknowledge all aspects of the business because, you know, anytime you start getting involved with something that you're receiving a dollar, it become a business. Right. You know? And you got to learn how to conduct yourself in the right manner to go further as far as business concerned, but still practice and study and master your craft. Everything was that else before in place? Was that? Did you know that from the beginning, or did you also have somebody had to put you onto that as well? Well, you know, I took time to look at uh, my elders before me because there's two um, in my family. They um, they passed away. My aunt, from what I learned, she was one of the first black females that sing um, opera in Carnegie Hall. Mm. And also my brother that just passed away, um, he he was one of the first member, members under Mr. Homebill Rucker. And after the passing of Mr. Rucker, they, him along with many others, continued the legacy of the Rucker tournament. Right, right, right. So when I take time and I watch how they carry themselves and pursue whatever their craft was, you know, it's like they don't tell me I watched them. So I know how to follow suit when it came my turn, came my time. And I kept that in the back of my head and just carried it on. Is there I, was any watching, uh, I was watching the documentary, The Uncle Ralph, This is Video Music Box uh, documentary the other day. And there's some great stuff of you read uh, talking uh, at the party, behind the scenes. And there's a conversation about what that term uncle means, you know, because when you think about that term in hip hop, it, it's really important. Um, and Uncle Ralph and Uncle Red. Um, and now people know Uncle Snoop. Um, it's, a, it's a term of real endearment. And for you, Red, when did you start to feel sort of like everyone's uncle in hip-hop, this, this character who, who was really there to help young artists and, and sort of play that role? When did that come well, about? 
Well, when you see that you, be, you become a seasoned veteran in the game, and you see a lot of the younger ones coming up, and you know you gear and guide them, they gonna look up to you as a big brother. But I rather take the um, the term uncle instead of big brother and just show them the way. And the first person who I really called uncle to was a guy named Tuffy that was working along with Ralph McDaniels. I should say Uncle Tuffy. Then when I was at a convention down in New Orleans, the BRE, who I saw? I saw Luke. I, I'm the one that gave him the name Uncle Luke. Mm, and then, wow. And, oh, wow. And then from there, I was say Uncle Ralph. And before you know it, every time you say Uncle, people in return say Uncle. So they call me. Just like when I used to go around saying Prop Master, everybody called me Prop Master. So it's like right back at you. So that's what it is. But I mean, that's a term that I think that's in high regards in the culture. Mm. That prop that's mask, amazing. by the way, if you've never listened to the DJ Red Alert, the Prop Master album, psh, the the dance hall classics on there, sir. Uh huh. I mean, I mean, listen, it's, it was one of the greatest. And then you had to remember the red clear vinyl that it came with at that time. <laughs> what year was that, Red? That came out in ninety four. Man, you know, oh, that, man. I have I have a Caribbean background, you know, from Antigua. Yes, of course. Yes, and also I don't mean to cut you off, but also I carry on a tradition with the line Prop Master because I have my own line, which is Prop Master Retro. Mm. I had that for about maybe four or five years. That consists of shirts, sweats, um, hoodies, caps, uh, jean jacket, and all. So you know, I keep that title Prop Master around for the duration. There and so you're saying, Red, that came from you would call other people prop master as a term of endearment? Yes, because if I saw somebody, there's something that you should say a long time ago that if somebody did good as a performance on stage or whatever it is, we should always say, you get your props. You get your props. But I, I say, yo, you're becoming a prop master. But mm. in return, they start calling me prop master, and I stuck with it. Wow. wow, man. Yo, Red, we love you so much, man. I just, mm -hmm. you know. I don't know if we get to tell you enough, you know, and, and for the audience out there, I mean, from the Jungle Brothers, uh, Boogie Down Productions, uh, Tribe Called Quest, I mean, some of the most amazing things. What well, is there? Is there a, a maybe a record that you broke that we may not have heard the story of? And maybe for the audience that maybe isn't even up on those other stories and the way you've helped the Fugees even. Um, well, put it, put it this way. Um, at one point in time, there was a record that came out by UTFO. Rest in peace, Kango Kid just passed away. Um, it was a record called Hanging Out on the A side. Remember, records was an A side and B side. Mm -hmm. So the record was called Hanging Out on the A side. I didn't care for it. I flipped it to the B side. I liked it, and I got a chance to break it. That was Roxanne, Roxanne. Wow. Now, I got another question for you, Red. Uh huh. Kango Kid. His verse on Roxanne, Roxanne. Have you ever known a rap verse to father so many different cadences and styles? Because that verse, mm. like the different styles that he used in that verse, it, uh, to this day, That's when true. I listen to that verse, the, his flows that he picks in that verse are uh, mm. incredible. I really give it up, and I respect, and I, I give it all to Kango for him to deliver that. But I think he also did his homework from people before him Got that it. he listened to, like, you know, the Cold Crust, to the to the Treacherous, to, you know, many other uh, the veterans. And what he did, he probably took pieces from here and from there and created his own, and it came out very clever. No, now, it's incredible. Now, Red, uh, the other day, everyone, you know, uh, there are a lot of records people credit you for, of course, going back to the late 80s. But some people may forget in the history that you continued to be a critical DJ doing the 5 o'clock mix here on Hot 97 into the 2000s. Would mm -hmm. you say it's true? Cass One was telling me this the other day. We were just talking about this last week. Cass One said he credits you for breaking and going super hard for two major records. Big pun, I'm not a player, the original, and Black Rob, whoa. Do you remember it being that way as well? Very, very much so, yes. I remember it. Thanks a lot, um, um, who you just say, Cass? Cass One, yeah. Um, Cass One. Yes, um, once again, I'm a person that I listen to each and every thing that come through. If it sounds good, I'm going on it. And I took interest in both of them songs. It wasn't no hesitation. I just went right on it. 
Uh, now, I got to ask you, Red, uh, I'm, I'm good friends with your young son, G. Mims, um, mm-hmm. who's turned into a, a, a dope MC. How's G. Mims doing? What are your thoughts on, uh, on his music? Oh, well, you know, I'm proud, super proud of my youngest son, G. Mims, that he be coming to his own. And I you know I take time. I lay back as daddy. <laughs> and allow him to be coming to his own because I always look at it this way. Everybody say, oh, you should do this for him. I say, no, I allow him to be himself. I don't want people to go around saying, oh, you got through the door because of your father. No, he carried his own weight to get through the door. I, I'm very happy, and I always tell him the truth of what is it out here that he makes, you know, so I'm proud of him. And then my oldest son, Rob, you know, at one time he was touching the mic, but he got into other different things, and he's coming along just as well. That's dope, man. And also, Red, congrats on doing the Drink Champs thing. What was that experience like for you? It's a pretty cool moment with that show being so hot right now and you getting to kind of get your flowers in that situation was very, very cool. Oh, man, that was quite interesting, Drink Champs. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we all know Nori is Nori, you know? Yep. But, um, but what I, I felt good about, I was allowed to go ahead and let the audience know what it is about me. Instead of just lingering on, you go ahead, you answer the question, but you also elaborate to something else that you want the public to know about you. So I felt good you know, being a part of that. Go check that episode of The Drink Champs. Also, make sure you go check the Red Alert exhibit over at the Port Authority. It's going to be there, you said, Red, until March 31st? To March 31st. So I got to big up two individuals called. They helped make this happen. They work at the Port Authority, and that's my man Myron Johnson and my man Rudy Kane. You know, and they really got it in conjunction along with my boys, Sean, Williams, and Cole. And they say they want to come back with, with another spit as far as my concern, along with Irv. You know, it turned out great. And i building more of a great relation with the Port Authority. Like I say, on government grounds, what more can you ask for? It's the Red Alert experience. And, and, oh, there's, and there's, there's no poo-poo juice available at oh, the Port Authority, yeah, right? There's none, none of that's available. Well, you know, I think you don't know that for the going on two years now, I stopped drinking. Oh, so there's definitely no poo-poo juice available. <laughs> yeah, so there's zero poo-poo juice. <laughs> zero. And, and none. this way, I had a good run. That's that the is. That is. I had a good run. But, you know, there's a start and there's a finish. That's right, so, sir. You know. Good for you, Red. Yes, sir. That's uh-huh. great to hear, man. Yo, Red, thank you for your time this morning, man. Hey, well, I also tell you that not only that it stops here what I'm doing with this, but there's more things that are coming up within the year as part of the Red Alert experience right along my team, Red, Red Alert. So, um, STFM, stay tuned for more. So, yo, and, and come, please come back on, man. Let's let's keep it going. Let's keep telling the people what's happening for sure. Oh, be more to it than just seeing each other across the hall. There it is. Let's That's do right. it. There it Thank is. Thank you, Red. Thank Red you, Red. Alert. Respect. Respect. Appreciate you, man.